So today I want to tell you about Hindi. That is my name. Name is Mala. Hindi is no Malini in Hindi. One who has no Hindi is Hindi Mala. That's one of the names. is a quality which is silent. It speaks in silence. It is one of the most non-aggressive attitudes. It probes into you. It doesn't express in any even love may express in words may express in action. This is the one which is expressionless and it washes all that is in it. Is there a rationality in this world? How it works? You have to feel it and know it. It is working now. It's closed. It's very difficult. Sometimes it's not even good. But it is never shocked. No. When I say that we find the human ideas have become lost. When do we become lost? It's upside down. When we are plunging into something. We are plunging into something where we are going to do this. We are upside down. This comes out of intuitions that you cannot see things correctly in the right perspective. So let us see what are the things which we think create impurity in us. They say in two words, lust and beauty. In Sanskrit they say kana and kana, woman and beauty. But woman doesn't mean woman means last. Read means good. Now let us see if really these are impure things or they create impurity in us. Or why? These two things have become a source of impurity to us. Because we do not understand the right perspective of matter and of sense. If we can understand, then in right perspective, then these two become the source of happiness and joy. For example, say a sheep. It has two sides. It has a shoot and a root. If the root becomes upward and the shoot becomes down, <coughs> it will not suffer. Root has to go down into the earth and the shoot has to come. The root has the capacity to settle the liquids that are inside the sun. Also it has capacity to digest all these 
essential salts necessary for them. Supposing now the root starts malfunctioning and starts sucking the impurities instead of the pure things that are needed for the body of the food. Then what will happen? There will be malnutrition and the tree will collapse. But the root has the wisdom to pick up the necessary thoughts for its nourishment. This is where we must understand that we do not have proper fields for our own nourishment and we blame God or we blame nature, we blame society, we blame cultures, we blame our parents, we blame our governments, we blame this and we blame. Because we have no feelers, we suffer that is impure which will create more problems for us than joy and happiness and nourishment. If the tree has to grow, it should avoid all that is poisonous food, all that is impure. Now there could be two methods. If your rationality is that high graded, if your intelligence is of that high grade, you just deny all that in your body, which is not good to your spiritual body, or to your mental body, or to your emotional body, or to your body. You just deny if you have that much of your intelligence. But the intelligence has not been that is all So you devise compromise easily. But whom are you harming? You are harming yourself. We go on collecting impurities very fast. And that's what I call is the human seed. If you want, you can collect impurities. A tree is not. It will not collect impurities. But if impurities invade it, it will die. It cannot be. Human beings have a freedom to choose. Also they have the power to protect. From these impurities and Sahajogi doesn't have much more power. So our roots have to go down into more, into that, into sustaining power of If that is weak, then the roots are taken off and such people are uprooted. In the traditions, in the historical mistakes and errors of our elders, we can see what mistakes they have done and learn from them. And avoid the impurity that they had and destroyed themselves. We can see big empires fell, crushed in the What? What did they do? We are not there. But so far I have not known any nation that sits down and gets a comprehensive look of the whole picture. Why that nation has fallen down? Why this was destroyed? So far I have not known any political leader of that time. They would do patch. But none of them sit down to see why the whole sky collapsed. What happened to those people who enjoyed so much of power once upon a time suddenly collapsed. If somebody could sit down like that, they would see that they sucked in the impurity. Now how do you suck impurities? You suck them because your feelers become blocked. When your feelers are blocked, 
if you remove what you are saying. It only is possible when you are not doing the work. In the beginning, the body, the mind, resists all that is in In most of the cases, I would say, some of the devils that are born, they may be children, but they think are exceptional. But most of the human beings are born in nurses and they resist. Gradually you start making your feelings blind. And then the impurity starts. All these things start to be saved from desire. Desire to be the king, desire to be the most beautiful person, desire to be living in the whole world, desire to eat, desire to have, possess, all desire. But here also I would say is an impurity. All these things, if you see this one, then that is joy. He desires pleasure. Desire for joy, if you keep it pure, then you go on with it. So this is not the thing that is joy. This is not the thing that is joy. We can see it around. Those who are seeking money should go and see. And when you go to people who are in joy and in tranquility, you find they are talking of something else. When we have Desire as something wrong. We also negate the ultimate desire. But the essence is so, we call the essence is so. <coughs> so means sad. Essence of everything is that. If you want to have a good cookie, in front of your house, the desire is to joy. What does a tree matter to you if it does not give you joy? It's like anything in the world has a need. That joy, that essence of everything, if it is kept pure, like a tree in bed in the mother's heart and suck the beauties of the essence of it that is meant for nourishment and enrich that sense. But that does not mean by any time by any mother that you lose your character or individual. You do not. You see, a mango tree will be a mango tree. A banana tree will be a banana tree. Because the outside is different, the inside is the same. And in every country, the Mother Earth has its own variety. Accordingly, you will have trees, you have fun. You cannot have mango in your way. But you cannot have, say, a birch tree in your way. But makes no difference as long as they are fully nourished. 
So your character is not lost. Your individuality is not lost. lost. On the contrary, it's made. In its purest form, every character is pure. Every religion in its purest form is the same form. Are the different facets of one diamond They have to be there. And whatever angle you go, you see that spark. At every angle they spark. A diamond sparkles at every angle. Because it has got its own character. In its own eyes, in its different parts. So the essential unity between them is through the sap, which is running. If her attention is on that unity. of oneness, that so many of the impurities that have brought up in the world will also suffer. The other impurity to suffer from is loss of collectiveness. We don't mind wearing the same dresses all over the world. If a jean starts all over the places you go, even in Japan, you go to Australia, you go to even to China, communist countries, when you have a gene and to this way. But the essential unity within us in its purest form. Mm -hmm. Of course, these feeders you develop after so But if you are trained in your dharmas, that's the basis, the root. If you do not have those roots properly done, then the tree cannot stand, it is necessary. But even to have the blossom within yourself and for others to enjoy, even to nourish yourself, you have to have your dharma properly. So we come to the question of lust and greed. Lust and greed are to be seen in this life. Are we lusty of God? Are we greedy of His wealth? If you ask such a question, then you see the beauty. We waste so much time to think about we we have, think of its essential desire. Now, there are two types of things, one that of the human being and one of the incarnation. That's why the behavior of incarnation cannot determine the behavior of human. This is a very big mistake we have been always talking. And please beware. You cannot be incarnations now, and you should not determine your behavior according to the behavior of an incarnation. Because incarnation is about all these things. It's a different thing altogether, as I think. The tree which takes its nourishment or is embedded in the world. You have to rise still to that stage. where your seeds might go into that. And maybe the trees will go from the divine to the sun. So the pattern of life that is followed by an incarnation are always followed and that's how false religions. For example, we see Christ took a hunter in his hand and started lashing at people. Which then they were selling God. I feel the same way and I I'm doing it. If you read Kabir, you'll find it's flashing and all this. If you read Mamata, you criticize that. But no. You are not in power. In you, when you have 
have those in view? Because what I see, that human beings nurture them to the nonsense. And they like to see the drama in them. For example, they'll go to a picture or a drama. They'll say, see a cruel man, hitting someone. They say, what a cruel man is horrid. But they don't know that cruelty they share in the They want to call others cruel, but not the cruelty that exists within them. You see, as far as others are concerned, they become a witness, but as far as they are concerned, they are not. If they could be, if they could be witness to themselves, if they could see themselves, then what will happen? That their purifying process is especially for Sahaja, because it has opened up, the tap is open, the spirit is in the Only you see where it has been, with your attention, in your view. Just put it, do not justify by saying, my society is bad, my parents are bad, this happened, because of this it has happened, because, no. They are there because you are harboring them. In others you can see clearly, but in yourself you can. That is what a human mind is. This is a very fine mind, which is being evolved. You read a book, for example, if you read somebody's book, immediately you are identified with the hero and never with the villain. You don't know the villain is much more there than the hero itself. It's a common thing I've seen with human beings. You see, I have now learned to many lies on this earth, what a human being is. So we have to pay attention to ourselves. But attention in a way which is very pure. Is a deeper attention, is not superficial. And should learn to go deep and close and see. Are we? Which part of mind? Which part of mind is hard? Now this boy who came, he didn't take out his socks because he thought there's a smell. Are we present ourselves? Are we considerate about it that we are equally present? It's a silent process. It's a silent process. And this has to be true. And because, as I say, in the Western country, so we are grasped. We need to grasp it. It is much more necessary for you people to work hard than the people who are here to crash down. They are about to. Most of them are coming. They are. And you have to announce with a horn. Now don't crash. We have crashed. That's your that's very important. Any man who has any consideration, any feeling for others, if he gets hurt by a stone on his way, he immediately stands and says, Oh, there's a stone here. Now don't be careful. Don't talk about it. When we are hurt by certain foolishness or stupidities, or you can say even the impurities that we have, in ourselves through our own egoistical pursuits. Let us announce to the world that we have been foolish. We have done it. We have broken people. We have broken our hands. We have broken our heads. We have broken our chakra. Now you go. For heaven's sake, you go. Because they are following you. They think you are doing our asana. They don't know they are all our you. In every way possible you have to announce, but the announcement is expected by people. You see, it's such a funny word to be a perfect person. So they want also your effort. This is what the world is, you see. Today, supposing you say, I was crushed down, I was finished, I have nothing in me to know. You say, then what are you talking about? But still then you have something to offer in that. 
And what do you have to offer is that we are crushed because of this. It will help so many people you don't. But people will deny you if you say only that. But if you say no, I was crushed in that way. But your being should announce that you are resurrected. On the contrary, if you are bleeding, if you are still the same star, you are. So Sahaja Yoga has given you that path. And when you ascend, you can go on along telling people, don't fall, don't fall. If you fall, it's difficult to ascend, as it has happened to us. So don't fall, there's a short circuit. Come to the short circuit. Your dharmas must be established. Very necessary. In the way of this rash society. Dharmas are to be established. What are we doing? Now? In the developing countries, they gather up their impurities. By wrong, They think, oh, we must have loved. We must have heart. We must have time. You see, the whole attention is how effective you are as far as the material things are concerned. It is when they start getting rid of their poverty, they just forget. Why did they remove their poverty? We remove poverty. We remove all these problems for what? We develop for what? We develop so that our day-to-day -day life becomes easier. And we have time for God. We have time for meditation. 